Hey, what is going on you guys? Luke Wayne here. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. Have a great day today. And as always, remember high hopes and low expectations. Okay. Gotham Knights comes out in one week. And I am joined by my good friend Irogen here today. So we can help maybe generate more hype in the community because I've noticed that it's there's been a lot of skepticism in the community and hopefully this can help relieve some people's worries because i don't think this will be a perfect game but i think it'll be a fun game to play and honestly i'm looking forward to it so uh Irogen, you want to start us off yeah absolutely i think going off of that awesome introduction right there i think that there has been a lot of skepticism regarding this game and i think understandably so i've been doing some videos lately looking at just some of the different gameplay models that rocksteady did with their arkham games and now that warner brothers games montreal is doing with gotham knights and just noticing that there are improvements that have been made since the last arkham game arkham knight the last big open world one that wasn't arkham vr and um you know seeing the improvements that have been made since then in many aspects and other trade-offs so other things that you know might still appeal to players more from the arkham games than they will in Gotham Knights, just because they're different gameplay models. But I also think that one thing that has just flown very much under the radar is a lot of the similarities between the two gameplay models and the fact that both of them rely upon you exploring Gotham and uncovering the secrets, going through a main campaign, uncovering side missions with supervillains. And again, I think that there's a lot of improvements that have been made in Gotham Knights. And a lot of those key factors that we all loved about the Arkham games will also be making a return here. And then things that we would never saw in the Arkham games, such as customization and co-op and a much bigger city than we ever got in the Arkham games. Uh, I know for me, one of my biggest things that I'm most excited for is just to get to explore the city and, you know, get to uncover all the Easter eggs and, you know, find the villains that they have here and potentially uncover who they might reveal later in DLC but I'm really just excited to jump into this, and in many r respects, just because it's a new universe and getting to see a new take on the IP. Right, I completely agree. It's actually extremely exciting to see like a new IP and to not have any knowledge of this universe at all whatsoever. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what it's like. We know that like the Justice League exists in this universe, or, or at least like Superboy does in some form of the Teen Titans because of those background Easter eggs. But I can't wait to see more as the game progresses and we, as we get our hands on the game itself. I think it's going to be really fun. But you mentioned the city, and by far the city is what has me hyped for this game the most. Because I think that this city has a better city than any Gotham we've ever seen in the Arkham games. Or I guess really we, we saw Gotham in Arkham Origins, which wasn't that great at all. And then in Arkham Knight, it just didn't really feel like Gotham. Like, there, weren't, there wasn't any verticality to the map. I know that's like beating a dead horse, but it, just, it always just annoyed me, you know? And one thing I would like to point out, actually, now that I'm thinking about it, is the civilians. And I know a lot of people have been saying they're, oh, they're just annoyed because there's no civilians. There's no NPCs on the street at night. But honestly, it it kind of makes a little bit of sense because it's like four or five in the morning. But I do agree there should be more civilians on the street. I, I do agree with that. But in that perspective, I'm not saying that you can't complain about it. But at least it's already better than Arkham. Because Arkham had no one. You know, in Arkham, I, everyone was evacuated. In Arkham City, obviously, it was all uh, the enemy NPCs, same thing with Arkham Asylum. Except you had the, you know, a little bit of police officers. But in Arkham Origins, it was it was just terrible. You know, it was just the, what was it, cold? And I was like, oh, I can't come out. I mean, that was, in, in the Arkham games, that was really disappointing. So I think already this yeah. is one thing better than Arkham. And I do think that this game will surprise us and a bunch of little more minor quality of life changes because I, I don't think that this game is going to be overall worse in Arkham. It has to have some aspects that has been improved in the past few years and the map is definitely one of them. Hopefully we get surprised with a few more. And I think that we have to look at like every Arkham game did something good, like really good. Like some people say Arkham Origins, I mean, included, has like the best cutscenes in City, the best story, Asylum, the best atmosphere. You know, it's just really, I think that Gotham Knights is about to have the best map out of any Batman game that we've had so far. Yeah, I, I think that the biggest offender is probably still, I, I mean, Arkham Knight was frustrating, but Arkham Origins, they were they were acting like everyone was still in the city, but everyone was just under curfew or something. And so their answer to that was like windows were lit up, but yeah, still not really enough to make the city feel alive. Gotham Knights, again, I, I think that, you know, there's only so much you can do when you're trying to make a game that encourages traversal on a on a motorcycle to get around, like 
if there's a traffic jam, that does not encourage fun gameplay because that I, I don't want to be stuck in traffic as Batgirl. That does not sound fun. Um, but I think that what you said about just having a dynamic experience, that's something that the Arkham games not only did well in, in each of their respective ways. I mean, even the first one, Arkham Asylum, was most well-known just for its dynamic environment and the Easter eggs that you'd uncover and the secrets that you could find. And then it only improved in each game beyond that. And, and it, it, it just always got more enhanced and there was always more to explore and the maps were always bigger. And Gotham Knights appears to be doing that in more ways than one this time. Not only is it a bigger map in terms of quantity, but in terms of even how you fight crime here, it's not just random street crimes anymore. Now you get to uncover bank robberies that are being planned or street chases that you're going to have to go engage in. And you, you have to go do the detective work and do the prep time and figure out which character you want to play as to take it down and, and figure out how you want to customize that character to be best equipped to take on the threat. And then again, getting to go and uncover really long sounding side missions with villains like Mr. Freeze and Harley Quinn and, you know, getting full arcs with them. A comparison I made was that it kind of feels like we're getting the like Cold Cold Heart or Harley Quinn's Revenge that were full story length DLCs being put into the base game as side missions. And I just find that very exciting and it's going to make the world feel so dynamic and so lived in. Yeah, if I'm being honest, I know when that was first revealed to Mr. Freeze, people were disappointed, but I actually think it's pretty good. Like, you can't, I'm sorry, you can't expect it to top the, to top the Mr. Freeze Arkham City boss fight, and you can't expect anything to really top that, honestly, because that boss fight was so good. So what do you want, just to never have another Mr. Freeze boss fight in a video game? I thought the boss fight, for what we saw, was pretty good, and it's not even like his excuse me, it's not even like his final form, you know? So I can't wait to see what we have going on from there and if every side mission has the care that that side mission has because they said that side mission is like nine missions or however long it was I remember thinking it was like really long and it had its own mini campaign that's gonna be pretty good the only concern i have is that they're going to not have that many villains and instead just have more focused stories on those villains and longer side missions but i guess it's not really a concern it's more of just a preference of having shorter side missions with more villains than just having fewer side missions that are longer but you know that's just more preference some people like that and if they all have the same love and care that that mission had then i'm all on board honestly because they're all like mini dlcs just like you said and cold cold heart is a really and cold cold heart by the way which was made by you know w games montreal is honestly a really overlooked piece in the arkham franchise because my opinion is the best dlc out of all of them it, it has you know a good amount of length and that has side missions in the dlc as a nice campaign it's just a really good story i just i like cold cold heart and it had the new xe suit so knowing that this game is being you know made by the games montreal i think they're going to improve in a lot of ways over the years especially because you know they have a lot of new developers and it's basically a whole new game company this is basically their first game honestly but I still understand like the skepticism that a lot of people are bringing to the table. Like I understand and I see that. I'm just hoping that it's not validated once we actually get to play the game. And going back to like the customization and everything, I think that it's like it, it's like this game is dipping its toe, dipping its toe in like all the different genres of game. Because you're trying to have the RPG element, you're trying to have you know the the fun open world Batman Arkham style, but you also want it to be team based. And I think it's it's doing it in a good way, not to where it's spreading itself too thin, but to where it's doing it just enough to where it's having it, but it's not being in your face about it, and it's not being annoying. It's not going to get the the sort of grindy feeling that a lot of RPGs get, because it's not going to be like an RPG-focused game. It's just an element on the side. Like, all these other aspects of the game are, this, are just there to, like, make you have fun. And I'm honestly kind of looking forward to being able to customize my character in a way that I've never been able to do in, you know, the Arkham games or even the Spider-Man games or any AAA superhero game to my knowledge, actually. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, absolutely. And and I think one final thing that I'd, I'd kind of add is even for some of those things that even I myself have felt a bit skeptical in terms of if it will really live up to Arkham. I mean, I just did a video today talking about five things that I, I feel like Arkham might still have the upper hand on in terms of features in, in the games, you know, and things such as combat. The Arkham Free Flow combat, it's very hard to beat. And Gotham Knights, it's seemed very debatable if it will reach that level of quality. But the people who've played the previews, I think most of those concerns, which have been pretty present across the board of fans of the Arkham games and just gamers in general, 
it seems that those are not nearly as egregious as people have expected them to be. It sounds like the traversal of like Red Hood and Robin isn't as clunky as it's been made to look in gameplay videos. It sounds like the combat feels more like free flow combat than it's looked like. And so I think even some of those things that have concerned players, or, or like you mentioned, the customization, people who've actually tried it out seem to have a lot of fun, you know, changing the color paths of their characters or finding new gear to equip. And so I, I don't think that those are going to be game-breaking issues. And like you mentioned, it does lean into a more RPG-focused experience, but it doesn't necessarily bring over the really frustrating RPG mechanics. It doesn't sound like there's level gating. There's not grinding to get new gear. You know, you, you don't have to sit and grind out six different side missions before you can do the next story mission. And so I think that it it's really taken into consideration what gamers don't like about RPGs. And I think that this could be a really great step in terms of crafting new experience in the RPG space that can start to weed out some of those more frustrating features and give us a more cohesive experience. I hope so, honestly. If this game is actually like really successful and it does really well, especially like in the RPG aspect, I hope that other games can look at it and see what it did well and maybe what it didn't do well and just try to improve on the genre as a whole. If this game is that influential, then we've won as a as a as a society. I society. Uh, I, I I think it's yeah. I have hope for it. And watching the early gameplay, by the way, is really nice because I know people are complaining in the early gameplay because, you know, you can just look them up on YouTube, like Gotham Knights gameplay, and people have gotten their hands in the game early. And it's like people watching it are, some of them are disappointed. It's like a mixed bag. You know, I've said before in a video, three people in every comment section. But I like, I honestly like the gameplay that we've seen, especially the customization because watching the gameplay and just watching like the first mission already, someone has like, a uh, specific shader for Robin and a completely new decked out pieces of gear that I've never seen before. And I'm like, I'm wondering, because they revealed like the 28 different suits or whatever in that one IGN interview, but they didn't actually reveal them in game. But I'm wondering how, how much stuff we haven't seen in the game. Like, I'm looking forward to it. I think this game is going to surprise us. It's going to have a lot of day one surprises. And I'm, I'm being honest right now, I really can't wait to play it day one. I'm really yeah, looking absolutely. forward to it. Yeah, I still remember the hype leading up to Arkham Knight and booting it up for the first time and just getting chills watching myself cremate Joker. That was great. So I'm ex I'm excited to jump in again. Like you said, new day one experience. I can't wait. I'm going to be streaming it. I'm sure you will be too. It's, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, honestly, I think no matter what, no matter how good or bad this game is, we as a community should be excited just to have a new game. That day one experience is really fun. And even if the game is 100% terrible and we all hate it, which I don't think will happen, honestly, it's still going to be fun to be unified again as a community, just to have new content since 2015, like a triple-A Batman, Batman or Bat Family game. And it's just, I'm excited for it. And I think a lot of people have to keep in mind, again, that this is the first game in a franchise, potentially. If this game does well, hopefully, then we could get a sequel, and we could get, like, this is might be the Arkham Asylum of the new Gotham Knights franchise. It might be doing a lot of new game mechanics that it will improve upon in the next games, and I'm all for it. I can't wait for it. I can't wait to see where this potential series goes, and hopefully it goes fun places, and hopefully it'll bring us content for years to play, and hopefully we all enjoy it. I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I think that we're just, we've had such a drought. It's been seven years since Arkham Knight. We've gotten, like, Arkham VR and the Telltale games. So we've we've been given, like, little, little like, chicken nuggets. But this is the first burger that we've had since 2015. And so I'm really excited to dive back in. And, you know, after this, we get Suicide Squad from Rocksteady and then Wonder Woman from Monolith. And, you know, I'm sure that at that point we'll be looking at Gotham Knights 2 or Teen Titans or whatever WB Montreal is doing next. So... I think we're just in a position where we're going to be getting some good DC content, and I'm excited that Gotham Knights is the one kicking it off. I completely agree. All right, guys, make sure to go check out Origins channel and drop a comment, drop a like. Please read them all. Subscribe, please. It really helps me out if you enjoyed this video. And uh, thank you guys for your attention, tuning in uh, for this long. Stay awesome, y'all, and peace.